Hey everyone, we've got another specimen today. This is number 133 in our collection. And the heart would have sat in the chest roughly like this. You can see that we have the lungs and the heart. So this would have been superior here, so head. Here's inferior here, so legs, left, right, anterior coming out towards the camera and then posterior towards the, the turntable. Um, just looking at this heart externally, right off the bat, it looks like the aorta is in fact anterior, so we'll just quickly find the pulmonary trunk, and that the pulmonary trunk is in fact uh, posterior. So it looks like we have an anterior aorta, so that comes off of the anterior ventricle, and a pulmonary trunk that comes off the posterior ventricle. So it looks like we'll probably be dealing with transposition, but let's go ahead and find what we think is the morphologic uh, right atrial appendage, and this looks to be it, although there's been a lot of work done. So let's just go ahead and open up this atrium and try to get our bearings. And when we do open up this atrium, we do see some evidence of some pectinate muscles that spill outside of the confines of this appendage up here and then some over here. So it does look like it is a morphologic uh, right atrium. We also find the oval fossa here. And we in fact find a defect in the oval fossa. So there is an atrial septal defect. Let me try to get some more light onto the heart here. There we go. We do find an atrial septal defect in the oval fossa. And then we do find the coronary sinus here. And remember the coronary sinus will be one of the components of the triangle of cock, which is bounded by the coronary sinus, the tendon of totoro, and the tricuspid valve. And at the apex of this triangle is in fact where we expect the atrioventricular node to live. But there's a lot going on um, when we open up and just look at this right atrium. So first of all, let's address this um, baffle right here, this conduit. This conduit appears to connect to the inferior cavel vein and then take the inferior cavel return somewhere else. So why don't we go ahead and follow this conduit. So inferior cavel vein over to the posterior aspect of this heart appears to open into the left atrium. So we do have now a conduit from the inferior cavel vein all the way to the left atrium and then what else we can see from the, the right atrium, which is now where we are again, is that there is this connection here of what appear to be the right-sided pulmonary veins to the right atrium, all right? So the right-sided pulmonary veins have been baffled into the right atrium. There is now a conduit from the inferior caval vein to the left uh, atrium consistent with a Bathus procedure, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm not. So a Bathus procedure which was done for transposition of the great arteries and consisted of routing the inferior caval vein blood to the left atrium and then routing the right pulmonary venous return to the right atrium so that some of that deoxygenated blood makes it to the left and some of the oxygenated blood um, makes it to the right so that they could go, some of the oxygenated blood could get out the aorta and some of the deoxygenated blood could get out the pulmonary trunk. So not a complete solution to transposition, but allowing some of the blood to get to the proper side. So let's go back to the right atrium. So here's the right atrium and here's the right atrioventricular junction we do find a three leaflet atrioventricular valve here. There are septal connections of this valve. So this appears to be a morphologic tricuspid valve. We would then expect this to be a morphologic right ventricle. There are coarse trabeculations and there is in fact a septomarginal trabeculation. And here's the septomarginal trabeculation with its cranial and caudal limbs. So there is a morphologic right ventricle. So, so far we've got a right, morphologic right atrium that connects to a morphologic right ventricle. So we do have 
concordant atrioventricular connections. But when we look at the RV outflow tract, we do find a semilunar valve that has three leaflets and three sinuses. But this appears to be aortic valve as the aorta now arises from the morphologic right ventricle. So we do have a ventriculoarterial discordance. And if we look within the sinuses, you can see the origins of the coronary arteries. So here is this slit right here. Sorry if I was blocking it with my hand. So there's one of the coronary arteries. And then let's look in this sinus here. And we do see the origin of the second coronary artery right here. So we do have the coronary arteries arising from the facing sinuses as is the most usual arrangement in the setting of transposition. So now let's go to the posterior aspect of this heart. And let's expose this atrium here. So here is the, the morphologic left atrium and it's consistent with the morphologic left atrium. We don't see any pectinate muscles spilling outside the confines of the appendage. Here, in fact, is the left atrial appendage here, and here is the orifice to the left atrial appendage, and if you look down, you can see that there are pectinate muscles within the confines of this appendage, but not outside. All right. And then, once again, we do see this conduit that's bringing back the inferior caval vein return to the left atrium. And then we do see that the left-sided pulmonary veins do drain into the left atrium uh, usually. And here is the backside of the oval fossa. Here is the flap valve. And here are the horns of the oval fossa. Here on the left, we find the left atrioventricular junction. We find another atrioventricular valve. This has two leaflets. This valve does not have any connections to the ventricular septum. So consistent with a morphologic mitral valve, and here are the papillary muscles. Okay, oops, I'm sorry, I keep blocking some of the things, but here are the papillary muscles, you can see both of them. And then when we look at this ventricle, we do find fine crisscross trabeculations consistent with a morphologic left ventricle. Now, as we get into this outflow tract here, we find a semilunar valve with three leaflets, one, two, three, three sinuses. And this, in fact, is the pulmonary trunk and it gives rise to the left and the right pulmonary arteries. And we can see that there is fibrous continuity between the pulmonary valve leaflets and the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. And so we have a heart here now with transposition that has undergone a Bathys procedure.